Hello, and welcome to session six of Your Creative Self. This exciting thing in my life. Anybody having a nice time or a bad time? I'm looking scared, because if you tell us about the bad time, there's not that much we can do about it. But we could sing you a song or something. I don't know. I literally had no idea what a biscuit was going to turn out to be in my language. Um, I think that's why Red Lobster's still in business. They're not bribes, they're gifts. Hello, Jodie Ann. We're down to here. Look, it looks like we're making progress finally. It'll create a taste disaster. So maybe it's, maybe they're doing it to save you from yourselves, Canadians. There's a slide, Jodie Ann. That's your face. These days, especially, Jodie Ann does Noir Girls Plant, which is why she's surrounded by plants, because plants have taken over her life. Uh, so everybody say hi to Jodie Ann. Hello. Hello. Hi. 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 We can, we'll, we'll draw pictures of camels on Jamboard till you come back. As you can see, I have a few plants in my bedroom, but I have about 63 plants in my room. So of course I can't just have plants. I have to share them with everybody. So I went to France for my 30th birthday and I was like, I'm French now, so why not? Again, that plant was like their goal plant, like their affirmation plant that they would have to kind of see flourish over time. That's great. You're teasing us with pictures of people in the same space <laughs> doing stuff. And at first I thought it was weird. So I'm like, why do you guys want to go on a hike with me? Like, that's weird. And I was like, why would I sell soil? You can buy soil at the store. But the more I researched and the more I literally wanted to see my babies, you know, flourish and grow, I wanted to give them extra bougie soil. <laughs> Instead of you always coming to my house and like mixing soil, it's like, I would just buy a bag from you pre-mixed. She goes, I don't want to do this myself all the time. So I was like, you're lazy. It's like pretty big now. Using Canva allows me to have the confidence to think I can draw. <laughs> Who launches a business during COVID? Well, I did and not sure why. <laughs> I was able to inspire other people through my own, I guess, darkness. <laughs> so on the jam board, uh, there's a good old mess. Jodi Ann, would you like to choose an animal for us to draw? Somebody said you are beautiful. Yeah, but don't address all your comments to me. Ann, I was wondering if you could help me with my plant. It's dying. Maybe I'm putting too much water in it. Is it Sienna doing the one in the bottom left? Yeah, the bottom good. left, I was like, damn. <laughs> Sorry guys, all the pandas are amazing. <laughs> but the oh. bottom left is killing it. <laughs> I tend to um, kill plants. So I probably RIP'd, I don't say killed, but I probably RIP'd, put to rest probably about like 10 or so plants, to be honest. You have correctly observed there that you should be paying Jodi Ann separately. For your job. <laughs> Everybody write one question. But like, I'll never like feel comfortable starting like a business because I'm like, well, other people are like better at this art than me. But at the same time, like I'll have friends who are like way worse and they'll be like, mm, selling this for this much. Self-doubt, self-sabotage. I'm like the queen of that. So like, don't worry about what other people are doing so much like really focus on like why you want to do it it was horrible i think i sold two things <laughs> and those two things are for my mom as like it was like, like oh you're creating a community like when i heard that phrase the first time i was like oh god i was like i just wanted to share plan it's half truth because you're always going to work a day in your life you're always going to feel tired but if it's something that you love you're not going to feel as it's not going to feel as draining I do things out of fear now because I've learned like over time, like doing things in fear, I've, it's been good so far. So I'm like, I just continue to say yes to things that scare me um, and see what happens. Bye. Bye. That sounded like a cat noise. A bit of very minor emotional blackmail and we've got more people on. Oh, um, I said I didn't cut my hair, but my dad made me cut his. Was that good for familial relations? Everyone complimented him, so I should start charging. Uh, Yvonne from Germany says, I always cut my hair myself. My cousin cut my hair based on a YouTube video, said so Chanel. <laughs> You're always going to have critics, but it's better to put something out and have critics rather than to not put something out at all because you're scared. That was hard. However, I found when I made the mistakes, that's when I learned the most. If you're not also in the arena getting your ass kicked, I'm not interested in your feedback. Yeah, you have the control of your life and not uh, not the fear. Oh, that's good, yeah. And this is a nice little version of that where you're in the driving seat, you do have the fear, the fear can sit in the passenger seat and be with you, but it's not driving the car. It's really common for people to feel, I'm not really good enough, but how much healthier and better is it if you can think, I am enough, if you can do it from a kind of vulnerable place, 
rather than the more kind of rah, I'm amazing kind of place. And then a stranger likes your thing and then you, you then you feel really good about that. And it's kind of unfair to your loved ones, isn't it? Uh, they're not even trying to do an interesting creative thing. So you, you're already better than them, basically. You get the most cute video about a panda and there's still got some dislikes. Like, who are you people? <laughs> so then if you do value, value courage, then you do have to do the thing and to show up and to be seen. But something where somebody's really tried to, maybe they've been vulnerable and they've made something creative and put it out there. And then they get some negative comments. I think, oh, how, how could you do that? At least they're trying. That's the point that Brené Brown's talking about. So whatever kind of creative thing you want to do and put out there, you kind of do have to do that. If we think it's worth people trying to do anything, then you, you kind of have to. And it's not really a choice in that way. Obviously, it is a choice. And ultimately, the answer has always got to be yes. Because otherwise, it's just a kind of, it's a defeat where you don't do that and, you know, and nothing, nothing happens. Uh, being courageous is always the better thing, even though it's hard. Again, it's it's like with the good passenger seat analogy, you may feel scared or maybe worried about what people are gonna say or that kind of thing, but you can put the fear in the passenger seat, you're still in the driving seat. I have adopted that metaphor now. <laughs> uh, let a couple of weeks pass and I'll pretend that I thought of it. Whereas if you don't put yourself out there at all, that opportunity itself doesn't exist. That's a picture of a piece of paper in case you've forgotten. And then I want you to draw a line down the middle. And I don't want you to upset yourself too much. So don't just write down the worst possible insults about yourself. And for me, uh, one of them is credibility. Like people asking, why does your voice or your perspective actually matter? Like, why are you even talking? Like things like that. Beginnerish, not proper, doesn't know what he's doing. No actual ability. Why Elon Musk? Please stop. And then this is nice to do. You'll feel happier. Like throw away the left hand column, but then keep the right hand column and the right hand column is the list of nice thoughts. If you don't uh, pay attention to the negativity, of it, it will go away. There's so many more positive comments than there are negative comments. I just want to say a little bit about minimalism, not so much lifestyle. I'm not talking about tidying up your house. It's about reaching for simplicity. So sort of stripping away all of the extras in your life or in your craft. So you arrive at kind of the bare minimum. You just want to do lots of stuff to show that you can and to make it more interesting. But it's just like, whoa, you know, that's too much. Gives me a headache. Why, why are you doing so much? So kind of that sense that like stillness and not doing stuff can actually be a thing and be good and be quite sort of healing and nice. Tearing away all of the rubbish to see like, what do we actually care about in the world? What is valuable? See you next week.